Welcome, I'll just do a short video on progress so far with Shirebrook, which I'm building in P4. So if we start looking north, there is a, a first scenic board here, which will have the station on, which I've not, not set up because there isn't anything on it. So as we, as we come down south, you've got in the first instance, point coming into a single slip, which I had hoped to get in this past year. But coronavirus put paid to it because I've got to collect it from, from Colin Craig who's point work on the flat bottomed rail it is so uh, the, the main running lines are flat bottom uh, what we've got is copper clad sleeper for the wooden sleepers in the station part coming out here once you get past the slip uh, you end up with the flat bottom which is concrete sleeper, so that's using the exacto scale sleeper basis. Uh, and then, as you can see, we're coming further along, you've got the main running line here and here, and then you've got a, a siding and then a run round loop. This is the depot area that we've got, and the building will go here. We've got the inspection pits on there. The copper clad sleeper here is also Collins kits. Uh, they are for the, the branch that runs behind the depot uh, as we come further down. Bullhead point work in the yard uh, and bullhead track. The, the, the points in the yard, the bullhead ones, are exact scale kits and then you can come along further on but the majority of the point work is on this this board here uh, which is most of the point work done now there's a mixture of, of, of various types of point to come along beyond there there are four uh, more boards doing the um, the scenic, the, 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 the country end going south towards Mansfield and Nottingham. There's a viaduct on the next board. Um, it has got track on, but I've not, I've not put it up um, for this demonstration, really, but we're progressing along that, along that way. And then you, you come, it's, it's mostly grass, although these are, from a building point of view, the most scenically interesting built boards. Behind the, the boards that we can now see, there'll be two other boards to your, um, over there, to your right, uh, which will have the, the station master's building on and where the branch goes under another bridge. The viewing side will be the, the opposite side of what we are, so we're now stood looking at it from the operator's perspective. The wiring that I've done is following the the, the method that, that, that Philemon's used on, on Calcutta um, as that, that worked for him. So and it's a similar size layout. So we've got four power districts, uh, one for the up line, one for the down line, uh, one for the um, um, what's it called? The, <laughs> the depot area and the siding, and then one for the, the auxiliaries. So that's that's gradually building up and um, the only building that I've really got through to to doing anything with is the station building uh, so I've built a bit of a card mock-up of it uh, which will go on the board that's not not set up so I've done, I've done the card mock-up I took some measurements from the real one that's still there this is the back of it, and then this is the, the end that would face the um, the track. So that's that's going. I've, I'm going to try and have a go at building that in in DAS modelling clay. Or see what we've got there. So I think that's everything. What? Well, yeah. So if there's any questions or anything, I can do those in the in the session or anything along those lines. Um, during the, the pandemic, I've mostly been doing stock. Um, I need to get some more bits for the for, for continuing with the track work, but um, not meeting up with anybody's problems with. But 
There we go. So hopefully, you know, we'll make some more progress and there's a long way to go still, but it's, it's getting there, I think. So quite pleased with where we are at the moment. Thank you. Bye. Lovely, thanks. So what I can do now... Sorry about that. It's all right. So now I'll try and share the... Uh, oh, what was it? Share screen. Uh, so, so, so um, I think I, I started about 12 years. Yeah, it will be about... 12, 11 or 12 years ago with the, can you hear me okay? Yes. And can, can, can you see the um, the PowerPoint? Is that... Yes. Yeah, that's good. Thank you. Um, so I'll start Betty, with... Betty, can you put, put the PowerPoint in play so it just plays up a bit more? Oh, it doesn't, it doesn't work very well okay. doing that. Sorry. All right. <laughs> Te technically, this is going to be a bit iffy, did we say? So... It was it was sort of a came about really as an idea because I was thinking what what to do in in P4. I was just going to do a small yard really, um, engineer's yard or something from a, a speed link type type thing. And then I was talking with Brian Hansen and he suggested doing doing Shirebrook really, which is just up the line from where I live in Mansfield. Um, so I did some some research for it and, and that and thought well it's a bit big. Um, but Brian convinced me that it's quite quite feasible and will fit into a reasonable space. So he did the track plan on um, template over the um, over a Google Earth image, so we could work out just how big it was going to be, and um, took the plunge. So this is a view of of the of the depot itself. Um, the photographs are taken from Flickr mostly, I think. And, and just a Google search of, so you can look up quite a lot of pictures and, and that yourself if you want to to know more about it. Um, you can see all the pictures. There's quite a wide variety of, of, of traction that was used in the period that I'm modelling from 78 to 86. So there were, in, in the earlier part, there's 47s, 31s, um, 56s, um, 37s. Uh, the, the only local, the only stuff that was allocated to the depot was shunters that were used in the collieries round about. Um, and then from from sort of mid-86, mid late 86, the 58 started to come. So there's, I've got a few of those on the, that I'm going to put in there. Um, so, anyway, so that's looking the other, the other way towards, towards Mansfield. Um, a lot of the old sort of Midland station buildings and stuff are still there. It was a good shed originally where the um, where the depot building is when it was a, a steam days, and then in the late sixties they, they changed it into this diesel depot for the the collieries that, that are quite dotted around the Mansfield, Derbyshire, Nottinghamshire border. Um, if you look in like Paul Paul Shannon's books, um, Rail Freight nineteen sixty eight and these was in the East Midlands. There's there's maps of the of the area with all the colliery lines and, and things like that. Quite a lot of them are still there, but the cycle paths and things now, um, as all the all the pits are closed, so there's no no need for the railways. But um, it's still a reasonable amount looking like that. Um, so that's a, a colour photo showing showing it as well. So what you see is obviously the slip is, is flat bottom, so it's all it's, it's panelled track coming towards the camera on this uh, in, in flat bottom, and then it's it's con the concrete sleep stuff after after the slip is is continuous welded rail, so that goes round. Um, so that was a bit frustrating because ideally I'd like to have done it all in with, with Colin stuff because I find it a bit easier to to build. Um, but uh, and, and more fun, I think. But it's it's nice to have a, a, a large, a, a various mixture of, of different track work, which makes it 
I think interesting if you're interested in track. Um, I found it quite straightforward building it. Um, just patience and and taking your time and, and testing it as you go along. So I think I'd encourage anybody to have a, have a go at, at P4 myself. Um, so the, as I said, it's a Midland built station, although in VR days it was on the eastern region. So the, the shed area, the, the glazed shed, um, is a standard eastern region one that you can find it at, at various places like March or uh, wherever, and other, and other places. So the, the station building was just turned into a bit of a, a driver's rest area. There is a, a staff block as well, and a top's office and everything attached to the depot, but I think the drivers and, and some people use the, the station buildings. And then there's the signal box. So that's another the standard Midland one. Um, it's only got three, three window panels, whereas the, the, the ratio kit's got four. So I've had to cut that down to be able to do some, some on that. There's a toilet to build as well out of brick and then some other stuff. So now the other thing that I think was different is, is that on the on the, on the kit that you can get all the, the paneling goes vertically, whereas there were horizontal laps on the bottom part. Um, so I've had to do those slightly differently with um, the some plastic cards strip. Uh, this is a site plan that's on available, I think, on on the web somewhere. Um, you can't see it very clearly, so it's it's, it's not very good. But it, it's what helped us to do the the track plan and, and, and get things in where it is, but as it's not very clear, we'll move on. Um, so the other thing is that plenty of 20s around on, because this one's on a ballast train, which is quite good. So I think one of the, the other things that's interesting about it is, is that it's not just coal, obviously, you know, any, any engineer stuff can run anywhere, which is quite, quite good for it. But there were also workings on Worksop and Toten and vice versa, um, Speedlink, stuff and there was a, a sand from Oakamore to Worksop where there was a glass factory so um, there's, there's a number of different flows that you can um, run as well so it's I think sort of from an operational point of view it, it was quite appealing as well to do it um, inside the shed you can see it's quite gloomy um, different things I did, a, a, a lady I worked with in, when I worked at Mansfield, her, her father had worked in uh, Shybrook Shed in, in, in the early 70s. So he, I'd, I'd met him and he, and he gave me some information about how they used to move the locos around and what they used to do and, and stuff. So I've got some of that information, which would be quite useful to, to operate the, the layout when it's up and running. So that's quite, quite good. Um, and, and the reason why I started in 78, because it would have been nice to supposed to have a longer period is that there's um in front of this stone bridge from, from about i suppose i think it was built in around 77 early 78 there's, a, there's a, a footbridge that was put in so it obviously prevents prevents you going any earlier and these signals that are on the right were moved on to the left so it it, it sort of um meant I couldn't do anything earlier. And you can see the footbridge and the, um, and, the, and, the new, and the different signals that weren't there. So it was a bit, a bit frustrating to find that out because uh, it would have been nice to have done something earlier. Uh, there were other changes as well because they used to be sanding towers in front of the depot in, in the early 70s um, when it was originally built in 68. But they were removed as well about the same time. Um, so there's a number of fueling areas which are going to be quite good to make um, and the pits um, are in. And that's how it's, it's quite good. Uh, and then there's a tall water tower from when it was back in the steam. I think so. That's to build. 
Uh, here's some of the, the, the 47 and the OCA. So there's, there's a good, good variety of stuff. It's quite nice. Um, and there's the fueling bit. Plenty of BR vans in, so it's quite good for me. Make some cars and stuff because stuff car park and everything is there. Um, I've got photographs of, of, of the two fuel tanks because they've, they've been taken out now. But when I went on a, a bit of a, a research wonder, um, they were still there. So I've got some photos on them, which is quite handy. Um, and there's a way to show that was a storeroom that they used. So that's not there anymore either. That's an actual, because the platform's been put back into use. Um, since sort of mid mid nineties, really, when they reopened the line to passengers, so they knocked that down and built a bus shelter type type one. Um, and here we have where, where the fifty eights started coming in. So quite a, a bit of a change in colour because everything's blue apart from these, really. And then. This was what was allocated. Um, there's a little Shirebrook van in yellow um, that there has been a model, an inaccurate model, I suppose, made. But Clive kindly sent me a photograph of that he'd taken of it. So I've got that to, to make at some point. Um, and then some of the some of the stuff that there were mostly coals. So there's 21 ton hoppers which I've been using, this is the first one that I've done, so using the Rumney underframe. Um, it's probably the, the fiddliest of the Rumney underframes, I think. I found, well, I found anyway, but um, they go together quite well. Um, so there's a few of these, I'm gonna do a couple of lakes of these, hopefully one full, one empty. Um, and then there's 16 ton minerals to do, and maybe some 21 ton minerals to add into that. But mostly it'll be HEAs and HAAs um, to do. Um, this is um, so this was shortly after we built the, the boards. We tested to put them up, make sure that they, they ran after Tim designed them and, and we put them together at his. So it took a week to, to design and build them all. Um, over there, so it's, it's good. So there's still some more because where the station is behind the, um, so the station sort of in, in the bottom left here. There's two more boards to go behind. I said in the video where the sort of the branch curves off and there's a, a scrap yard and um, station master's house and things like that. So it will be sort of six feet wide at that point. And then it's got to curve back round on itself to go into the fiddle yard. So it'll take up a reasonable amount of space. Really. Um, and these are some of the points that I've got built. So there's a, the big one at the back is a, a BV10, um, which rather like um, Guy, I've had to put two points over board joins. Uh, the, the BV10 is one of them. So that I had moved it further up and, and out of the way, but it, it didn't look right because it doesn't sit with, with how the so I moved it, I moved it back down and um, and had to cut it. But I think it sort of cut, you know, I think just before the, the V. So it's it's not too much, it's really only like two bits of plain line really, I suppose, because the moving part's further down and on the board. The only worry I think is if it gets caught, it's more hassle to rebuild and put right than if it, if it, than if it is played up plain line, so I have to be a bit careful with some of the boards. Um, and it was easier to do these than it was to do the exact scale points which, which went over the board join, because I had to replace the plastic sleepers that come with the kit with some um, copper clad sleepers and, and fiddle about with, with that, so that, that took ages to, to, to build the, the point, because they get together quite quickly, really, otherwise, because it's it's mostly jigs and, and stuff, so quite straightforward to, to do. Um, and this is the, the latest 
thing that I've, that I've had a go at. So for one of the, the totem works on speed exists, I do some some vans. Um, so this is stamps models, BDA under frame and sprung, doing the axle boxes and that. So that goes together really well. So that was a couple of days work to do that. Um, and this is the 58 to, that I'm working on. It will be 20, Doncaster Works. And then I've got another couple that I'm doing. But it's one of the ones, one of the first 26 that had a, a different silencer to the one that held in of models, or the held in models that I've got, which were all number number four. Um, so I've had to, to cut it down to the rectangle and fill the other bit. So it, it took a while to do, but it's come out okay, I think. Um, there's a few other things to, to do, um, which I'm using. I think Gareth's article and, and Simon's articles in various magazines. Yeah. And then these are just a couple of 25s, which didn't really, I've not seen any photographs of them at Shybrook, but there were quite a lot in the area. Um, there were a couple that, that did rail tours through. So I thought, well, um, I've got these, I'd started doing these for the layout that I was thinking about doing before Shirebrook anyway. So I thought, well, I'll, I'll finish them off and use them. And uh, yeah, that's the end of the slideshow, so I'll stop sharing, you know. I'll do that. There we go. So that's it, really, in, that, in, a, in, a, in a nutshell. Um, if anyone's got any questions or anything that they want to go through, I'll, I'll answer them. Uh, Have you connected it up yet to the baseboard, to Tim's uh, fiddle yard, Bertie? No, because we've not done the, um, the ends, the curved ends yet. So I've got to do those. I was going to arrange to go, but obviously the last year and a bit has been a bit awkward, hasn't it? So... <laughs> just a bit I, I am i am behind where i where I'd planned to be because i'd hoped to get all the track down by the end of um last year really and then and, and then the other boards done as well and then it would have been sort of complete but it, it took so long to build the to do the the scenic ones with, with that the, we couldn't do it all in the in there so we got to i think you make great headway. She's only far further ahead than I am. Yeah. <laughs> I think we made the boards round about the same time, didn't we? Round about, yeah, I think so. Yeah, about the same year when it started. So, um, but I, I built, but just built the track. The points are all built off off the boards anyway, so I didn't, I didn't need them to, to, to build them as it was. I could get them cracking. So it was it was quite a lot of progress at the start because I'd already done a bit of it. It was just a question of putting it down. Um, one odd thing that you may notice in, in the video, I suppose, is that the, the, the track plan on, on, that's printed on the boards isn't, doesn't match where the points are, but that's because it was all drawn in, in bullhead because that was the only option at the time. Obviously, some of the flat bottom points have a different geometry, so it throws it out a little bit. But it's a useful guide to have, the, I really just use the, the, where the line goes rather than where the sleeper in goes. Um, it's the so. same with a printed one, I think, really. I, I, I'm always making amendments uh, mm. when you actually lay the track, right? Um, even with the, the template printouts, I mean, yeah. You kind of things look better when you put it out, when you lay it out. Well, I'll, I'll move that a bit or slew that to the left a bit. Yeah. What did you say was wrong, by the way, with the 58 on the exhaust port? On, on the Helgen models that I've got, they're, they're the larger ones that, that were on, on the later ones. So um, 1 to 26 had a rectangular one, and then they had, they had like a, um, a, a bigger box at the back, I suppose. Which is correct for, for some of them, just not the entire fleet. Yeah, yeah, but not, not for the, the first ones. Bertie, you've got a few signals to make, I take it. 
And of course, yeah, the, yeah. So um, there's the seven four signal by the bridge to do, and then there's a long one, a bigger one by the um, signal box, and then the rest are are ground signals really. So there's some seven four ground disc ones. Oh yeah. Um, by the station and that and that area, and then the others are. Um, Colour light ones, the, you know, the black triangle box yeah. type. Or mixture. Coming out of the depot. So. Mm. Yeah. It, there's, there's various, because some, the, some of the points are operated mechanically from the signal box. Some are operated by levers mechanically on the, in, the, in the depot yard, and then some are operated by clamp lock. So some have got clamp locks and, and, and various other things. So some have yeah. done. So there's, there's a good variety of, of different things that. Um, Colin identified which ones were which and where they go, and he knows his stuff. Yeah, so um, I, I didn't know that much about the, the various operations of them, I suppose, and that which ones were were what. So he, he identified what goes where and, and what kind of points they were, and everything. So it's quite quite good. Yeah. Um, so the, the, you've built most of the point kits off the board, and you're going to place them, are you? Yeah, well, they're all in. They're all in place now, apart from um, three three points in the slip. Yeah. So, uh, but I can't put any until, until I get the slip from from Colin, which he's working on. I, I can't put the others down because that's sort of like the the key in the jigsaw from. Where you've got to start, it's not a starting point at the station end. So it, it's um, there's that to do, but they are built um, to a larger extent, I suppose, um, ready to go in. What about the plane track, Bertie? Hmm. You got stacks of that or you wait for a few lid rails to build it like Phil did? <laughs> no, I've got quite a bit because the, the concrete sleeper stuff just threads on. Um, so really? Just... I mean, I wouldn't say just. <laughs> <laughs> um, You've got to taper the ends of the rail and then and then thread it on. I don't find it goes on without doing that. Which, what rail are you using? But it's, 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 there's some Pico flat bottom and then there's some of the newer batch of, um, oh. You can't get the individual A code 82 anymore. No, you can't. Three years ago. So I'm using the MGS code 83. Um, and it's a tight fit on that. Um, so yeah. on, the, uh, on the exact as well, I don't know, maybe the... P4 base. No, even on the P4 bases, I've tried it too. I've got some of those. It's a tight fit. CNL had some new, I don't know, like a new die done, didn't he, or something for yeah for, the, for it. But it is it is slightly different to the to the Pico stuff. Um, so I've used I've used that, but it some some are tight and they bind a little when you put when you thread them on, and some are some aren't. It, it, it various things. Uh, but I have had to scrape. So on, on, on the exact scale concrete sleeping, it's got... Um, I can't remember what it's got on there. It's got the manufacturer's name on the sleeper. Costain. Costain, that's it, yeah. Yeah, the Costain one. So I've had to scrape that off them all, which was a bit tedious. Because <laughs> they're not on... Well, but obviously, when there is... I suppose 60 foot of sleepers to do and each each 60 uh, well 60 foot in in sense of the, this it's 30, basically 30 feet of the layout so for each 60 foot panel although th there are there are 26 sleepers because of the yeah type of line it is so there's quite a lot of sleepers that i've had to to scrape the name off 
What yeah. I've seen of you, though, Bertie, you love filings. That must have been right up your street. Yeah. <laughs> you know what yeah. you do at the trail? Filing your plastic yeah. bits. Filing it. So it, it was a good, a good fix of plastic dust that, that week when I did that. Yeah. Mm. Mm. But they're so small, it makes your fingers ache holding them to file them. Oh, yeah, it does, doesn't it? Yeah. When you, Any little job yeah. like that, if you're doing it when for a while. Yeah, well, if you're doing it for five hours, it's <laughs> at a time. It wasn't wasn't much fun after a while. But... So, so I, I would have for that for a number of reasons. I think, but one because the the pan draw clips on that exact scale stuff aren't aren't really very good representation. Um, I would I would have rather that it was all wooden sleeve. I could have used colour and stuff right too because it. I, th I think it's easier to, to to build in that way, and it's also cosmetically and aesthetically, it's it's more accurate as well. So. Yeah, but you've you've got to work with what you've got. I couldn't. Um, I couldn't be doing with that. There's not very much choice, I suppose. There isn't much choice. No, that's true. Really, no. So it's, it's there are compromises with everything, I suppose. So it's not ideally what I would have liked to have done, but um, after a lot of agonising, I plumped with it and, and stuff. But it's fine. It is a lot of agonising. I've had stuff running on it. If I spent yeah. half the time doing stuff as I spent thinking about what to do, I've got a lot further by now. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. I, th I think because if, if you want to... It's possibly because it is a, an actual location and there are photographs. It's looking at, at trying to make it... What I wanted to do is try and make it as a, an accurate representation as possible within obviously and, and it's, 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 it's realizing what the constraints are I suppose and, and then managing them because yeah. ideally what you, what you set out with a plan not to make any compromises at all and then you think well you wouldn't ever build anything you, it just wouldn't have got built if I'd have no, you, you been just on, on, yeah so I, I think Great. I'd rather have yeah. No, I don't mean it. Like Just a hobby. Yep. Just a hobby, apparently. <laughs> so, but I want to get it finished, uh, up and running, and hopefully, in the next few years. Yeah. Good luck with that. I've got ideas for some smaller layouts. So, when I've done it. Concentrate on the big target because if you if you wander you'd be oh yeah no it, it's it's not I'm not digressing in in that sense but I have got other stuff that I want to do after hunt, hunt, hunt for the elephants don't hunt for the foxes don't get distracted by them that's the way I look at it you know, go for the big kill yeah. have you got a target show Bertie like bid round twenty twenty three or something in the garden <laughs> is that really fit in the garden. Wouldn't it? <laughs> He's trying to get the showcase, but he doesn't. <laughs> yeah, if we get back, yeah. Mm. Well, that was cool, yeah. maybe. Done when it's done, I suppose. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Obviously, I've got deadlines in my mind, but I'd like to get things achieved by, I think. But yeah. um, they're fluid. Mm -hmm. but, Thank you very much, Bertie. That's thank me. you. Thank you for asking me.